Serial dilution is a stepwise reduction in the concentration of a solution. Change in the concentration is constant at each dilution step. The diluent used to make the dilutions is a neutral additive that does not change the properties of the sample. Serial dilutions are a fast and efficient way to produce highly diluted solutions. It's an effective and accurate approach to generate diluted solutions. Serial dilutions are extensively used in virtually every life science lab, as well as in hospitals, pharma, and food industries to estimate the linear range of target proteins, loading controls for Western blotting, standard curves for ELISA to perform colorimetric assays, and to estimate concentrations of microbes in bacterial colonies or viral plaques. To make a serially diluted solution, a small volume of the stock is moved into a tube of diluent sequentially. These dilutions can be done in a micro titer plate or test tubes depending on the final volume required. The following factors are important to calculate a serial dilution. Number of concentrations needed, which is N. Final volume of the diluted solution, which is Vf. Dilution factor, which is calculated by dividing the final volume by the move volume. Move volume, which is Vm, is the volume of the stock moved between dilutions. Diluent volume is calculated by subtracting the final volume by the move volume. Let's look at some common examples of serial dilutions. To make a 1 is to 10 serial dilution of a stock of 1 mg per mL cell lysate, with the final volume required for each dilution is 100 microliters. We need six different dilutions. Add 1 is to 10 dilution. Move volume is calculated by dividing the final volume by the dilution factor. First, we'll add 90 microliters of the diluent to each of the six tubes. Then, we'll take 10 microliters of the stock lysate and add it to the first tube to make a 1 is to 10 diluted solution, which gives us a concentration of 0.1 milligram per mil. After thoroughly mixing the first tube, we'll take a fresh pipette tip and move 10 microliters from the first tube to the second tube. We will repeat this procedure till we make six tubes of the diluted stock. In the end, we will have six tubes of serially diluted solution with the final volume of 90 microliters, except for the last tube, which will have 100 microliters total volume. Remember to mix each tube thoroughly and use a fresh pipette tip before moving to the next tube. Doubling dilution series is another type of common dilution used in most labs. To make twofold dilution series of protein sample for Western blotting, in this example, we want to create serial dilutions starting from 10 micrograms to 0.5 micrograms, and we want to load 10 microliters per well of a protein gel. The final volume of the dilution for protein gel loading will have to account for an extra 25% volume to account for pipetting errors. Duplicates are prepared because in dilu doubling dilution series, the move volume is half of the final volume in each tube. The dilution factor is 2 since we are diluting each tube by half its original concentration. The final volume that remains in each tube is 12.5 microliters. Let's prepare the first tube of the serial dilution. The math for this tube is slightly different than the rest of the tubes since this tube will have the move volume coming from the original stock of 2.5 micrograms per microliter. Since the highest concentration we need is 10 micrograms, we need to calculate how much volume of the stock lysate is needed to get 10 micrograms in the first tube with a final volume of 25 microliters. For this math, we'll use the classic dilution formula of C1V1 equals C2V2. C1 is the concentration of the stock solution. V1 is the volume of the stock needed to make the new solution. C2 is the final concentration of the new solution. And V2 
is the final volume of the new solution. Using this formula, we know that we need 10 microliters of the stock to make the first tube. Therefore, we add 10 microliters of the stock and 15 microliters of the diluent to make the first tube. To make the rest of the tubes first, we add 12.5 microliters of the diluent to each tube. Then, we simply move 12.5 microliters from the first to the second tube and so on and so forth till we reach the fifth tube. Remember to mix each tube thoroughly before moving to the next tube. At the end, we will have 12.5 microliters of the solution in each tube and can take 10 microliters to load a protein gel.